So as we said, the total score is very useful, but it is so much more useful to chart that data. Now what I did, just to keep it a little simple, because there's so many calculations going on here, I copied and pasted the data from A, columns A to E, as well as column P, to a new sheet. So now notice here we just have A to E, and then column P became column F in this case, and that's the total score. And it makes it a little easier. I've, I've pasted it with values, so when I did my paste, I, you know, I did a copy, and when I pasted it, I said paste values, and that way I didn't bring over all those, those funky little formulas, and I now just have the data and the score. With that, I can now insert a scatter graph, and to do that, I, and I'm going to show this to you in Excel 2007, as you go down to 43,000 records, it's going to have a little bit of an issue in Excel 2007 when I do this and say scatter graph, it, it immediately says you're going to have to create two data points. So let, let's kind of go with this for a second. And you know this is the, the chart that I've created. Now what I can do very quickly is I can change, let, let me move this chart to a new chart first off. Excel 2010, you don't run into this problem as much because it, it did ex extend the amount of uh, data points that you can have. So let, let's take a look at the select data. So in series one, if we kind of edit that series one, we have you know E2 to E, uh, uh, you know 43,000. Let, let's just kind of keep this uh, simple here for a second, and uh, let me just redo that. Bear with me. I'm just going to edit that, and I'm just going to copy this by right-clicking that and saying copy. And remember, this is the E2, and that's the F2. I'm going to change this from E2 to 31,000 in this particular case. Just to add a zero on the end there, whoops. And down here, same thing. I'm going to go from F, whoops. So we're just going to change this. May even be easier, actually, the more I think about it, to, to uh, change this with your actual range selector. So we're going to change this to 31,000 as well. I just want to make sure I haven't, yep, so let, let, me, let me just highlight that. So let me show you how you would do it with your range selector is we're going to go from A2 and we're going to bring that down to 31,000 right about there. Just come up a little bit and we'll just make it right there. So F2 to F31,000. So we have E2 to 31,000, F2 to 31,000. Great. Okay. So now we have that data. That won't, you know, by the way, we won't have any issues now that we go back in between charts and, and things. It, it'll recalculate fine. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select data, add, and instead of having, we're basically going to start at the 31,000 and, and 1. I'm just going to paste that in here. I remember I copied it from before. I'm going to change this to 31,001 to 43,004. So now we went from 31,000. Okay, so we're going to have that. And in the series Y, I'm going to right click, paste, and we're going to change this to F to uh, F31. 001 to F43004. So we, we can fool it to add both data series, which is what we want to do. And now we can look at this data and look at the scores for these values. Now, this is an interesting way of looking at the data. Again, we're, we're charting this data for each amount, so the amounts are, are down here and then each score, which kind of goes up this chart here. And again, th this axis may not be the best axis, so we may want to change that axis to a logarithmic scale. And it's going to say negative or you know zero values can't be plotted, or, and, and you might have wanted to, to maybe do an absolute value of the values, but again, this is so much more useful now to look at it in this logarithmic kind of way where, uh, again, you can see the, 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 the uh, uh, 0 or the F2 to uh, 
to the F31000 as blue and then the others as red. Uh, but, but just looking at, say, even the $10 mark where the scores of $10 never really, anything around $10, 1099, etc., never really get that high, it's when you start getting to marks like $95.99 or $9.98 or uh, over here probably be nine fifty ninety nine. Uh, you know, these are the scores that start, start to drive up more because from a Benford Law point of view, from a first digit point of view, a uh, second digit point of view, um, but, but again, also even a last digit point of view. I mean, I'm sure if you had 9140.00, that that would probably show up, even though it's hard to find in here, way down on the list because it would have less of a, uh, a ninth, the 99 factor wouldn't be driving into it. But, but what's nice about looking at this scale is you can start to really understand and maybe cut off at say any score over 200 I want to look at those values any score that is lower than say 100 or lower than 50 you probably never even want to look at um, but but now you're going to be looking at, at amount values over a certain dollar range or over a certain point scoring range that are weird and you're still you're probably one two three four five you're, you're probably only looking at 10 or 15 percent of the actual file in values again this was showing you charting this both in the, the standard kind of format that we're all uh, used to in the formatting of access taking away the, the logarithmic scale which again this doesn't give you as much of a flavor for what's going on here although you still could select some items uh, that that are let's say higher dollar value that that do have a pretty decent size score here's another one 632,000 has a pretty high score you might even want to look at that one 94,000 that has a pretty high score to, in relation to everything else on that that list there but that logarithmic scale just gives a much better flavor of your data Now while taking a look at the scoring based on just the actual amount itself and in itself, what's also interesting is to summarize that data say by supplier, by enterer, by date, which is what we'll do here. Now I used active data and I summarized based on this uh, score sheet that we created, I, I summarized by supplier and I got this supplier summary over here. Now, I just copied and pasted the data over to the right here just to kind of keep it separate a bit, but you, you don't have to do that. Uh, what I then did was now that I have this data here, I've charted that data. So take a look at here. This is data where I took the count to score and I created a scatter graph of that. And let me just uh, head to the top here. And that scatter graph is just what we were looking at here. And once you've created that scatter graph, if you ever want to insert a trend line, you could go to your chart tools, layout, hit trend line, and click on linear trend line. There's a lot of different ones here, but uh, you know I, I usually select the linear. And you know it is kind of interesting, uh, especially when you take a look at the uh, count to score. Uh, I'm using a logarithmic uh, scale here as well. That you don't have that many items that are showing up above the line. I mean, it's, it's almost like that linear line works. And I, I think when you think of Benford's Law in a lot of ways, you, you almost think to yourself and say, well, the more numbers you have, the more it's probably going to align to Benford's Law. And even out here on the thousand where you, you, know, you have items way out here, let me just take a look at this uh, item way out here where we're, we're taking a look at the count of items to the total score. We have 979 items and a total score of 122,000. Notice how that linear line just like cuts it right through. And again, it, it kind of goes to the power of Benford's Law and digit pattern that really says that the more data you have and the more that you're, that you're gonna have in count, the more it's going to line up to Benford's Law and to digit patterns. So it's kind of a, you know interesting as you're down here at the one and the 10, that there's a lot of variability, that variability becomes less and less and less and less, and you know, then it becomes like perfect. <laughs> so, uh, okay, based based on the count to the score. So, looking at the count column to the score is maybe not as useful. Let's take a look at the value to the score. So now we're looking at the dollar value of the summarized total for a supplier. So a, a summarized total by supplier over here on the the axis. 
to the total score. And I've done both in a logarithmic scale because I, I just find that you just you tend to, to get a better analysis that way as we've been showing. And now you have a lot more variability because we're doing it on amount. We're not doing it on the count of items. We're doing it on the sum total of amount. And this is where I find it really interesting. So each one of these dots is a supplier. And uh, a supplier in this case that has, you know, $867,000 has a score of 5453. Way out here, as, as we probably are going to note here, this one has a score of 79,000, 1.5 million, you know, and you, you kind of see here, here's my 122,000 uh, item. But what's interesting, where we have the 413, uh, $1,000 here and 122,764 that that's actually below the trend line like it's it's even though so that this going back to this guy here it's the same guy uh, this is the one where we had 122,000 uh, in score if I can actually select it bear with me uh, okay here he is 122,000 has a count of 979 items so that doesn't look very you know strange it actually lines up perfectly and in amount form, because it's a $413,000, it's actually below the trend line of what the trending is expecting. Uh, what's above the trend line is this uh, 1.6 million, where he has a score of 79,000. I guess the point of all of this is you probably want to look at things that are above the trend line that are higher scored. So probably this quadrant right here is where you want to be focusing and probably more so in the quadrant above the trend line. But again, what a, a much more interesting way of looking at your data and realizing that there's so much here that's showing up in the middle with a, a lower score from a digit pattern to last year in Benford's Law that you can just get rid of you know, in your analysis that you don't really have to look at from an exception point of view. And now when you're doing your investigation and evaluation, you can look at it more above the trend line and you know in this quadrant on the right side here and, and that again is going to bring up maybe five to ten percent of your population is what you're looking at now as opposed to ninety five percent down here we can also summarize the data which I've done in active data here by date range and that one can also create and what I did here was I then highlighted this date and the total score and I created a chart of the score by date and I created a line chart so again just kind of highlighting uh, all the way down here uh, from oops from the top Let me just I'll scroll to the top here so you have it so from the top downward to the bottom what I'm then doing is inserting a line chart just clicking on that one there with markers and it, it created this line chart here and again, very interesting just to look at kind of the peaks and valleys. And what I noticed was the variation seems to happen in the last week of each month as you highlight 623, 825, uh, 1022. So there's something happening in that last week prior to month end of each month that's just driving stuff up. And I don't know if we're paying a lot of our bills then. That might be the reasoning. Uh, or some other rationale, but it's very interesting as you look at this data that in that last week that's when things happen and that's where you can start to investigate and evaluate uh, what's happening there. I also did this in a logarithmic kind of way and you know this one actually shows things are, are a little you know probably even lower uh, than expected in certain data points than they are uh, higher than expected as, as you see here so you know probably looking at it more in the standard format uh, provides more interesting information I suppose than it does in the logarithmic format and again I'm sure there's some rationale there as you do your research and investigation the point here is uh, that by summarizing it either by date or by supplier in this case or by enterer of the data which we didn't do here in the interest of time can be very useful as well